Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today, my topic is a new story. My brothers and sisters, each one of us have a story to tell. And I'm sure those stories are the stories which will inspire our fellow human beings. And today, in our present times, the best way to explain a situation or about a person, about ourselves, is to tell a story. Everybody likes that story. Each one has their own story. But the story, what we are going to hear, is the new story, which is of Lord Jesus Christ. Everything which is in the opposite of what one would expect in this world. Right from loving our enemies to praying for them, for their good and giving them whatever they need. That's against this world. The world wants to only love their friends and hate their enemies. But the story, the love story of Jesus Christ, the love story of Creator God, is to love even the enemies. Just like our Creator God, who gives us sunshine, rain, the fertile soil, etc. Everything to both the good and the evil. So likewise, when, we, when His Spirit is within us, we need to be loving even our enemies, even the good and the evil. Not just loving the good and hating the evil. We need to love both. Today we'll see from scriptures how we have so many different verses, so many different stories which can inspire us and we being His children. The privilege of calling ourselves is God's children. We need to be, follow him from these stories. Let's look at Joel chapter 1 verse 3. Let your sons tell about it and let the sons' sons, let the sons' children tell about it to the next generation. So these stories are given to us from the Old Testament as well as from the New Testament. For us, to hear from our parents and then understand during our own maturity when we change from childhood to adulthood. We need to understand how it applies in our own lives. And then once we have applied to our own lives, then how we can share that to our children and how make to make sure our children's children also understand the story. And that's what Prophet Joel talks about here. The legacy has to be forever. God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness has to be told to generations to come. And how that's how we know we are talking about it. Let's look at another uh, verse from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 29. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said, to the next and said to him the next day give you a son that we may eat so there were times when people had all these kind of rituals the practices and they continued those rituals and practices for generations but god put an end to everything that is evil god's love forgiveness mercy and compassion are the only ones to continue as a legacy for generations to come and not evil. Because God is good all the time, all the time God is good. That goodness has to be continued for generations to come and not the evil. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 21 verse 30. The man came and said to the Samaritan, so this so the same thing and he answered I will serve but he did not go 
this is about the story of uh, the prodigal son, uh, Matthew chapter 21, where the father goes and tells the elder son, go to the field and work. The elder son says no. But later he understands, he repents, goes and works. But the younger son, he says, I will do it, sir. But he never does it. So what we see here is the persons, the people, the story, the moral of this story, even if we, we have time to reconcile at the last moment and going to do the will of God. But if we, for this pleasure, for this pleasures of the world and for the lust of flesh and lust of wealth, if we accept God's word, only in, for the sake of it, try to tune that to our own likings. We are not going to go anywhere. We are going to be destroyed. Our physical death, that's the end of it. But we have opportunities to reconcile. We need to reconcile and be there, go and do what God wants us to do. And that's the reason he said, the prostitutes and the evildoers who have changed will be ahead of you in the kingdom of God. But a person who remains good all his life, but just before death he commits evil things, he is surely going to die. But a person who has done evil things all through the life, transforms and dies, he is going to be in heaven. That's the word of God, not my, not my version, it's the word of God. So God is giving us that privilege, that Thousands of opportunities to transform ourselves, to change ourselves, to seek his mercy, to seek his pardon. Just like the thief, the good thief, Daimas, at the last moment he seeks, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus tells him immediately, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's what is important. My brothers and sisters, it is time here and now. We need to understand from this story that we need to seek the reconciliation of our as soon as possible and surrender to him. We don't know our death when we would have that another opportunity. When we have this opportunity, let us go reconcile to God and seek his mercy and start surrendering our free will to him. When you look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 4 will turn aside from truth and turn to myth. There are people you know, who may be good, they know the truth, but then because of the attractions of the world, they will turn away from God and turn to mythology. That's what is happening. We have so many Christians, evangelical Christians talking about prosperity if we will believe in God and you know God's because anything of this world any riches of this world is not with God God seeks you in humility not in riches but well if a person is rich but that richness doesn't make him a slave to it if he thinks and he considers that richness is owned by God, then it's fine. But if he thinks that he is the owner of that richness, he is evil. As simple as that. Matthew chapter 20 verse 12. Now, when you see Matthew 20, we find the story, the beautiful story of the vineyard, how the owner of the vineyard hires people at different times. Some he hires in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening and some in the last hour. But each one is accepted when the persons who came in the beginning, in the early morning, they were promised to have one denarii. But then when people came at a later time, the owner of the vineyard says, I will pay you something 
which reasonably helps you. But when you see in the end, the person who just worked for one hour, he gets one denarii. And then all the others also get one denarii. But the people who came early in the morning, they start grumbling, they start complaining. Those fellows who came just for one hour, they were paid one denarii and we slogged from the morning. And we too were paid one dinar. But then the owner calls them and tells them, the people who came in the early morning, my friend, do they not agree with you that I'll pay one denarii? I paid you. And why are you grumbling? Why are you unhappy about my generosity? So when the owner has given even the person in the last hour that one denarii, he knew that that one denarii would be required for him to support his family. So God knows what to give. We can't question God's mercy. We can't question God's ways. That's the moral of the story. The people who are last will be first and the people who are first will be last. God doesn't think like man. God's foolishness is greater than man's ultimate wisdom. Now, in Luke chapter 10 verse 31, we find the story of the Good Samaritan. We find how a traveler gets mugged and beaten and left hard and dry, empty-handed. The priest passes by, he doesn't care, he just passes the other side, he just looks at it, oh, it doesn't bother me, he goes away. Some other people pass, they don't bother. But the Samaritan, a, girl, a fellow who is not from the community, when he passes, he has that pity and that compassion for that person. He bandages him, wakes him up, puts him on his donkey and then takes him to the inn and tells the innkeeper, take care of him, when I'm back, I will pay whatever charges you have. So he is my neighbor. So that's the story, who is my neighbor? So that story gives the important message that every person in need is our neighbor. Now in John chapter 21 verse 25, we talk about, John writes that many things have to be written about Jesus. There's many stories he said. He says the books of the world will not be enough. That's a very huge statement. Then imagine the number of parables Jesus would have spoken to his apostles and to his disciples and to the people of his time. But these are some of the stories which are captured. For us to understand and be inspired how we have to be. Let's look at one of the stories of the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 3 verse 23. The story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. How the Emperor Nebuchadnezzar after his loot of Jerusalem brings these three young men, strong men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and how he wants them to worship what he commands. But then they flatly refuse. No, we are not going to bow before what you would call as God. We have our God. We know our God will help us. And even if you had to put us in this fiery furnace, seven times hotter than normal one, we are not going to be afraid. We will die if required because physical death doesn't matter to us. But then what happens? We find when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego are put in that fiery furnace, we have a fourth human person, Lord Jesus. The angel is also there. The fire did not even damage any of even the hair was not. So that's the power of God. God is loving, kind and merciful. We need to hope on that. And that's the new story. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 27, how we hear the owner forgives a bigger debt 
to one of her servants, but the servant goes and catches one of his own debtor for a smaller amount and he throttles him and puts him in prison. When the owner comes to know about what this servant has done to his fellow servant, he calls him wicked and puts him in prison until he pays every penny of what he owes him. So that's another story. If God forgives us, we need to forgive others. If we can, we can't seek God's forgiveness if we do not forgive our fellow human beings. That's another story. Now in Psalm ch chapter 78 verse 3, which, which we have heard and known and our parents have told us. Psalm 78 3. So there are many stories, biblical stories. We heard as a child and those stories still come to our mind. And that's what exactly we see in the Psalm 78 3. How parents are expected, are required to teach their children, give them stories of truth, of peace, of joy, of forgiveness, of happiness. And then how those stories will implant in their minds so that they keep up the story, the moral of the story throughout the entire lives. And that's what is important. So if we don't do, if we as parents do not give those stories to our children, the children might never know that. But God has given us that opportunity. God has given that privilege to tell those stories to our children so that the children, when they become adults, they will tell their children and that should continue. And that's what God wants us to do. Now, in Luke chapter 8 verse 11, the parable of the seed, how the seed of God, the seed is provided by God and how it falls in different places and how it produces. The moral of the story is to have that root, the grounded in Jesus Christ to produce fruit. The story of the vine and the branches. We have, the branch cannot produce fruit on its own unless and until it is attached to the vine. And our creator God is the vine dresser. He will prune the branches to yield 30-fold, 60-fold and 100-fold. So we should be prepared. We should let God prune us, go through the sufferings that's all pruning us so that we yield fruits 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. Now there are other stories how Jesus stops the, the hemorrhage in that woman who was suffering for 12 years. We have seen how Zacchaeus gets transformed. How we see Bartimaeus the blind beggar receives the sight, how Mary of Magdala anoints Jesus' feet and wipes it in her hair, how Lazarus the gets raised from dead, how the widow, the compassion of God, how Jesus wept at the death of Lazarus. See, all these are stories which inspire us. We need to share our fellow human beings. If they mourn, we need to mourn. If they are happy, we need to be happy. We need to share both joys and sorrows. And that's our open story. We need to love our fellow human beings. We need to love our enemies. Not only our friends, but our enemies as well. So that we give a new dimension, a new face to our lives. So that... The story of Jesus Christ becomes the history, his story. The brothers and sisters, we have so many stories in our Bible. They inspire us. We need to tell that to our children. And our children, when they become adult, they will tell it to their children. And that's how it should continue. And this is the new story. Bye now. Peace be with you.